Welcome to Learning in 10 for Ultrasound Abdomen, a Primer. At the end of this video, you will be able to understand how ultrasound images are formed, list the indications for an abdominal ultrasound, recognize normal versus abnormal sonographic appearances, and list the pros and cons of ultrasound. When electric signals pass through an ultrasound probe, piezoelectric crystals within the probe vibrate, producing high-frequency sound waves which travel through the skin and into the internal organs. The tissue's varying properties, characteristics and densities reflect the transmitting waves as returning echoes to the piezoelectric crystals. The echoes are represented as points of variable brightness in shades of grey forming the ultrasound image on the right. Abdominal ultrasound imaging protocols may vary among institutions. An abdominal scan generally evaluates the liver, gallbladder, kidneys, spleen and pancreas. Alternatively, targeted ultrasound of the hepatobiliary system or kidneys and urinary bladder may also be performed. Doppler ultrasound assesses the vasculature of abdominal organs such as the portal venous flow, arterial and venous flow in the liver, the arterial and venous flow in the kidneys, and major vessels like the aorta and inferior vena cava, allowing one to diagnose vascular disorders such as stenosis, thrombosis, or aneurysm. This slide shows examples of acute and chronic indications for abdominal ultrasound. Fast scans in an emergency setting help detect free fluid be it in the peritoneum, pericardial, or pleural cavity. In interventional procedures, ultrasound helps to guide needle placement for biopsy of parenchyma and mass, sweet aspiration, and injection of drugs. Let's move on to recognizing the sonographic features of normal abdominal organs and some of the common pathologies. A normal liver parenchyma has echoes similar to or slightly brighter than the kidney. Ultrasound allows the assessment of liver parenchyma changes. In fatty liver, the liver parenchyma demonstrates increased echoes and appears significantly brighter than the adjacent right kidney parenchyma as noted in this new image. The top right image shows a small liver with an irregular border and heterogeneous echoes due to cirrhosis. Note also the ascites surrounding the liver capsule as shown by the red arrows. Now, look at the bottom left image. Can you identify the solid cystic mass in the left liver loop? Well done if you have identified the outline portion. Next, look carefully at the bottom right image. Do you see a mass? Notice there is inconsistency in the liver echoes. It is not homogeneous throughout. If you identify the mass that has been outlined, you were right. This image shows the gallbladder lying anterior to the inferior vena cava. Normal fluid containing organs such as the gallbladder and inferior vena cava appears anechoic or black and may be difficult to tell them apart. Turning on the color Doppler can help to distinguish IVC from gallbladder as represented by this new image. Looking at the bottom left image, presence of Edematous thickening at the anterior wall in green, echogenic sludge in orange, and stone, the arrow, is a presentation of cholecystitis. 
the patient will present with tenderness when the probe is applied to the diseased gallbladder. Looking at this middle image, can you identify bright acrogenic stones located in the dependent portion of the gallbladder? Next, it is common to mistake dilated biliary ducts for liver vasculature. Hence, turning on the color doppler can help to tell them apart. A normal kidney has bright hyperechoic central sinus and dark hypoechoic parenchyma. A mass can be cystic or solid. This image shows a cystic mass at the inferior pole of a kidney. Look carefully at the top right image. Do you see that there is a solid mass of similar echogenicity as the adjacent normal renal parenchyma in the interpolar region? This mass causes indentation of the bright renal sinus. At the bottom left image, a stone, shown by the red arrow, is identified by a bright or echogenic surface, and a dark or hypoechoic shadow beneath it, causing hydronephrosis at the superior and interpolar region. The last image shows a significant hydronephrosis involving the proximal ureter. Real-time evaluation can help demonstrate the presence of stone at the distal ureter. This image shows how a normal spleen appears in ultrasound, which measures less than 12 cm. The image on the top right is an enlarged spleen with tubular black and echoic splenic varices. Color Doppler will fill up the lumen of the varices. The pancreas is not always easy to be seen on ultrasound because of overlying bowels containing gas. However, with careful evaluation, one can identify a large cystic mass as shown in the bottom left image or obstructing stones causing dilated pancreatic duct as demonstrated in the bottom right image. Unlike CT, ultrasound is a non-ionizing imaging tool. It is cheaper than CT and MRI and is more readily available. Because it is performed real-time, it is easy to differentiate a mobile stone from an adherent polyp in a gallbladder. Identifying organs and pathologies depends on operators' knowledge, skills, and experience. Ultrasound has limited penetration in obese individuals and does not pass through bones and bowel gas, thus restricting the visualization of organs and pathologies in these regions. In conclusion, ultrasound is a safe and cost-effective imaging tool that uses high-frequency sound waves. It is useful to evaluate the abdomen in acute, chronic and emergency settings and in guiding interventional procedures. It does not pass through bones and gas easily and operators must be proficient in their skill and knowledge to avoid misinterpretation and misdiagnosis. Thank you for tuning in to Ultrasound Abdomen Appointment. We hope you have gained an insight to an ultrasound abdominal scan from this short video.